Right, I think we are live. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me. It is afternoon because it is four minutes past 12. Um, as always on these live streams, please let me know if you can hear me and you can see me okay in the chat. Uh, and yeah, welcome to everybody watching this live and hello to everybody watching this afterwards. Welcome to Concordia Solitaria. So Concordia, fantastic game, been out many, many years. Uh, anybody who thinks Concordia isn't a fantastic game is... I think wrong is the technical term. Um, so yeah, Concordia is a brilliant game. And this year they released uh, an official solo expansion for the game. Uh, there's been an unofficial one for a while, uh, which is very good. But the solo, um, the official solo mode came out this year. So I'm going to be covering today part of it. What I want you to do, to, what I want you to take away today is that the Concordia Solitary mode actually includes quite a bit of extra stuff. Um, it includes obviously the solo mode, which you can play with pretty much any map. And there are rules in the back for if you're playing with the Salsa expansion or all of the different maps. So basically, if you've got everything for Concordia, the new Solitaria rules can be used for pretty much any of them. Uh, there is also a campaign mode that we're not going to be playing today, but that's included in the game, which is fairly simple. You play a series of games. Um, but the other thing is you could actually use Contrarius, which is my opponent today, as a third player. So in a game of two players, you can actually use Contrarius as a third player. Um, in the box, it's a little box that comes with the game, but there's a whole bunch of extra stuff, including these team cards. So Concordia Venus gave a new way to play the game, um, which is using the Venus cards. And the Solitaria mode has team-based cards. I don't know what these are. I've sleeved them and I'm putting them to one side. What I'm saying is that there is stuff included in the game that we're not going to see today. I have chosen today to play on the Italia map. This is one of the ones that comes with the base game and is suitable for two to four players, apparently. So I figured this is probably a good map uh, yeah, to, to play on. We're going to jump in. We're going to start playing. I will explain a little bit about the setup. Um, setup for the main board is the same. These cards are different. So what you've got in place of the normal deck of cards is you have a special deck of Solitaria cards. They are ones and twos. You shuffle all of the twos, then you shuffle all the ones, put all the ones on top of the twos, and then you lay out the first seven cards. So if you look closely, you will see that these aren't the same cards. Uh, well, they're similar cards, but they're not exactly the same cards you use in the base game. And there's only 14 of them. So the game's going to end, or one of the ways the game can end, is when all of those... Uh, 14 cards have gone. When the last card is taken, uh, that player will get the Concordia card, which is worth seven points in endgame scoring as normal. The other bit that is slightly different is that um, Contrarius, my opponent, has five cards in a display. Now, Contrarius is going to get more cards in that display as the game goes on, but that is effectively my opponent's hand of cards. My hand of cards is similar to what you would normally get. Oh, Loki's just coming to join me. Uh, similar, but slightly different. So I'm just going to show you one of the cards. This is one of the cards that's in my hand. And you will think, well, wait a minute, that's exactly the same as the normal Tribune card, but it has the C bit on it, okay? Uh, and all of the cards have that. So all of the cards are the cards that you normally know. Um, but there is an extra box on there. And the way that this works basically is, I will take a turn. And then my opponent, Contrarius, will do the action in the C box of the card that I play. Now, what that means is I also sort of have control over what my opponent's doing. I know that if I play the Mercator card, what that means is that Contrarius is then going to build a house. I know that because that's on the card. So the opponent doesn't have its own deck of cards. It has this display but it doesn't have its own deck that chooses his actions for it. The actions that it takes are based on what I'm going to be doing. Uh, the other thing is that there are difficulty settings in the game. There's three different difficulty settings. I'm playing on the easiest setting today because I'm not very good at the game, which means I actually start on 20 points. And if you think, well, that's a big advantage, it's actually not because, um, yeah, Contrarius scores uh, more points than normal. Right, a couple of other little bits of admin before we get out of the way. This isn't a sponsored video, uh, so I'm creating this video thanks to the support of my uh, Patreon campaign. A lot of my Patreon supporters are in the chat right now. Thank you very much for joining in and uh, watching me play and cheer me on, hopefully cheer me on. Um, but yeah, if you like the content that I create and you want to support the channel, please consider supporting me at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. 
We have a countdown to 800 going on at the moment, and we're currently, I think, at 772. So only 28 more supporters before I hit that magic number of 800 where I have something uh, planned. If you're not in a position to be able to support me on Patreon, please give the video a like and leave me a comment. That always helps the algorithms. Right, we're done. I start with six money in the solo game. The setup here is as normal. The Jaffa cake is a cherry Jaffa cake. That is if I win. If I win, I get to eat the cherry Jaffa cake. If I don't win, I'm gonna eat it anyway. Um, so it's there for the end of the game. And I've got my cup of tea. Right, let's jump in. Um, if you are watching this live, <clears throat> and or if you're watching this afterwards, let me know which your favourite map of Concordia is, because I think there's about 12 maps for it. Um, and I'm curious to see, because I've been playing a few different maps recently. Um, and I'm just curious, yeah, so let me know what your favourite map is in Concordia. Right, so I'm going to take the first turn of the game. Now a standard first move seems to be to play the Architect because you start off with lots of goods and looking at the position here, it's done a bit of a variable setup and I'm looking at the cards that are available here. We have the farmer, we have the mason, the smith is here, uh, which means probably the vintner and the, the weaver, is it the weaver? Uh, they're probably later on, but I like to try and get control because I could build a cloth city straight away. Although building a cloth city costs loads of money, doesn't it? It's like five money, I've only got six money. Um, but potentially I could. I could I could potentially build a cloth city early on. Is that too much? Possibly too much. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not, as I say, I'm not that good at the game. Um, so I'm never sure of any particular strategy. Now I do have, I could build in the wheat and there is a farmer there. My opponent's probably going to take some cards. I'm going to play the architect card, right? So I'm going to take the I'm going to play the architect card. So I basically move my colonists, and I've got two colonists on the board, so I've got two movement points, and then I build in adjacent cities exactly the same as normal. Uh, but then my opponent takes a card. Now I'm using the blue screen today, so that there is actually a blue die. But because I'm using a blue screen instead of my green screen, you can't really see it. So after I've played the architect card, Contrarius is going to take a card, and we use the blue die to determine. Uh, which card he's going to play. So, Architect, I've got two movement points. Are we going to build in the cloth? Are we going to go for it and build in the cloth city really early on? Maybe we will. Maybe we will. Now, if I build in the cloth city, I also want to build in the brick city next to it, uh, which would cost me a food, which I could do, but the cloth city is here. How many cloth cities are on the board? Three. That does mean I wouldn't be able to build in anything else because I'd be able to get there. One, two, one, two. Yeah, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll build in the wine city instead. Yeah, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my two movement points to move this land colonist to there. I'm then gonna build in these two cities. Can I afford that? I can. So to build in a wine city, it cost me a brick and a wine. Uh, Oh no, hang on. No, it's a brick city that I need to build in. Right, so I'm going to move that colonist to there and that colonist to there. I'm then going to build in these two cities here. So it's a brick and a wine and four money for that one. And it is a food for that one and one money. So that costs me five money and all of those resources. Brendan's terrible at Concordia. Excellent, Brendan. When would you like a game? Because... <laughs> I might actually win. I'm playing against the AI a lot at the moment on the digital version and I just can't seem to beat it. I am playing on the hard AI to be fair, but yeah, I think I'm getting slightly better. So we take two of my houses, put one on there, one on there. That's a good start, right? And then my opponent takes a card. So we're going to roll the blue dice. So there's four dice included in this game. We're going to use the blue one now. And basically it tells it which card it's going to take from there. It's a four. So it's taking card number four, which is the Smith, and that goes into its card display. Now that's gonna change what I do because there is only one Smith card in the game. So I know that I'm not gonna get the Smith card. That would possibly dissuade me from going into the metal cities. And that's it. And then I just take another turn. So you can see how 
pretty easy the AI is. The only complicated part of the AI is when it gets down to where it builds, and we'll come through. We'll come to that when it happens. Um, so I'm now thinking of producing here because that will get me the wine, which I can then sell to get the money because I've only got one money. Um, so yeah, let's let's do that. Let's do the prefect card now. In the base game of Concordia, you start the game with two Prefect cards, but there is also this additional component called the Prefectus Magnus card that moves around the table. In the solo game, you have two Prefect cards. One is the Prefectus Magnus, and one of them is the Prefect. So right now, I'm going to play the Prefectus Magnus card. Well, the Prefect card with the Prefectus Magnus icon on. So, as usual, I choose to produce in one province or reactivate all of the provinces and takes money, and my opponent will get points based on how many houses there are in the province, minimum of two. So I'm going to choose Campania to produce. Uh, I get a wine. I also get a wine because of that. And I also get another wine because I played the Perfectus Magnus card. So I get three wine. And then my opponent gets one point per house, minimum of two. There's one house in that region, so he gets two points. And that is that card done. There you go, right, back to me. So I'm tempted to produce again, this time down in Corsica. Because that would get me a brick and a metal. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna play a Prefect card. So this is the normal Prefect card. Uh, so in this case, it is slightly different. I don't get the bonus good. And my opponent only gets one point, uh, well, it's one point per house minimum of one. So I'm going to play the Prefect card. I'm going to choose Corsica. We flip Corsica over and I get the metal and a brick. Metal and a brick. So my warehouse is full. Um, and my opponent gets one point because there's one house in that region. There we go. Right, what are we going to do now? We could Tribune to build another colonist. We could Makata to start selling stuff. Uh, the Diplomat card in the solo game basically allows you to use one face-up card of Contrarius. So unlike in the uh, non-solo game, in the multiplayer game, when you play Diplomat, you can copy any other player's uh, recent, most recently played card. In this game, you can choose whichever one you want. But the one that you choose is flipped face down, and then you can't copy it then for the rest of the game. Another option is I could buy cards. Let's have a look at the cards. Because the other Makata is there, which is really nice actually, and the other Prefect is there that's also nice, and I do have the cloth. So I could do that. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to play the Senator card. So the Senator card for me is purchase up to two cards into your hand, and then Contrarius is going to build one house using the white die. So we'll do my purchasing first. I'm going to buy this one which costs a wine and something else. So we'll spend a wine and a brick. And that goes into my hand. And then I'm gonna buy this one, which costs me a wine and a cloth. That's expensive, but that's what I'm gonna do. That's the cards I'm gonna buy. Okay, and then these slide down. We get, we're in the twos already, the weaver and the prefect. And then Contrarius builds a house, and this time we're using the white die. Okay, so we roll the white die, and it is an S. Okay, now, on this white die, there are icons for the different types of resources in the game. The S means that it will try to build a house of the specialist, which it has got uh, that's the highest value. Now, at the moment, it's only got one specialist, the smith. That means it's going to try and build in a metal house somewhere. So the first thing you do is you work out all the possible places that it could build. It's only got two movement points. So we look at all of the metal cities on the board uh, where it can get to. It can get to here with, with two movement points. It can easily get to there. Can it get to here? Uh, it cannot get to here. So Neapolis is one of them that it can get to. Can it get to here? Hadria, it can. One, two, it can get to Hadria. Uh, can it get down here? Yes, it can. And can it get over here? It can't. Right, so we've got three possible options for where it can build. The next thing we do, and I just want to make sure I get this right. 
if multiple cities are still available, if possible, an empty city that doesn't have houses in it. Well, that's fine. They're all empty. They don't have houses in it. Um, if multiple cities are still available, it chooses a province where it currently doesn't have any houses, which is all three of them. Um, so that's it. Only if a new province is not re is reachable. Yeah. So then you basically do them in alphabetical order. I think that's right. So yeah, you first of all work out which cities it can get to. Then it prioritizes um, cities there where it doesn't have a house. Sorry, prioritizes cities where you don't have a house. Then it prioritizes regions in which it doesn't have any houses. Uh, and then after that, it basically goes in alphabetical order. So we've got Illyria here. Well, I'm pretty sure that's the first. Yeah, then Hadria, then Neapolis. Um, so it's going to go here. Now, how, how does it get there? I can choose whether it goes one, two, or one, two. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put it there. Uh, and then what it does is it simply just takes one of its houses and puts it on there. It doesn't actually have goods. It doesn't have any money. It doesn't have anything like that whatsoever. But that's what it does. It moves the colonist on the shortest way to the next city that it can build in. If multiple lines you choose. Um, yeah, and then the tie breaks for if there wasn't any available. But that's it. That's what it did. So I bought two cards. It built a house. Uh, no, wait, it goes to Umbria. Does it go to Umbria? Let me just check. It only builds in cities that it is able to reach with its colonists and that it has not yet built a house in. Okay, if multiple cities are available, choose an empty city without houses. Okay, which we've done, they were all empty. And if multiple cities are still available, it chooses a new province which is new to it. It doesn't matter whether I'm there or not. Yeah, you don't have a house in that region, so it goes to Umbria. Does it? I'm Well, I'm reading the rules here, and I'm not seeing that. So I do want to play this right, but it says, if multiple cities are still available, it chooses, if possible, a new province, bracket, new for contrarious. Only if no new province is reachable, it builds in a province where it already has houses. So... Yeah, I think I think that's right. I don't I don't think it matters where I have houses. It's just trying to build in a new region for it. And because all three of the regions are new for it and there's no houses in any of them. Yeah, new for it. So we're good. Right, back to me. What am I going to do? We only have one money. Uh I do have the metal and the food, so I could build another colonist if I play the tribune card. We also have the diplomat. Now, I don't think I want to diplomat anything at this point. I don't want to play the prefect card. Um, I don't want to play the architect card. So diplomat is a no mercator. Probably not. So I think it might be, although the, the mercator no, let's play the Makata. Let's play the good one. So I'm playing the Makata. So I get five Sesterti uh, from the bank. I'm then going to sell a metal because I don't... Oh, hang on a minute. No. I say I don't need the metal. I absolutely don't need the metal in order to build metal cities because that's not what I'm going to be doing. But I do need the metal for additional colonists. But I don't think I need it right now. So we are going to do this. We are going to play the Makata, take five money, sell the metal, which is another five money. And then I'm going to buy. So that's going to go to the new colonist when I play the Tribune card, which is going to be next. Um, what am I going to buy? Well, I think maybe I want to go for wine cities, which means I need the Vintner when it comes out which means I'm going to need more wine and I'm going to need more brick. So I'm definitely going to need more brick. Let's buy a couple of brick. That doesn't give me much money, does it? Yeah, okay, that'll do. So I sold one metal and I bought two brick. So should I buy three brick? Uh, I think it's city name 
Yeah, it's city name alphabetically, not region name, because there could be multiple cities within a, within a region. Do I buy a third brick, leaving me with only two money? No, I don't. I'm just going to buy two brick. Okay. And then uh, my opponent builds a house using the black die. And the province produces. So this is the other thing. On the Mercator card, it's going to build a house and then the province produces. So it's building a, it wants to build in a wine city. So we have a look at the board after having a cup of tea. Wine cities that it can reach. Can it reach this one? Yes. Uh, can it reach this one? Yes. Can it reach this one? Yes. Can it reach this one? No. So there are three, three wine cities that it can reach. Okay. If multiple cities are, are available, it will build in an empty city without houses. So that removes this one. So it will build in that one or that one. So Lyseria or uh, Panormus, Panormus, Panormus. Um, it will build in a new province. So it's, it's not in there and it's not in there. Therefore, we go to alphabetical order. So it goes for this one. So it's going to move this one, one, two to there. And then it's going to build a house in Lyseria. And then the province produces. So. I think it's just that province, and because I'm not there, I don't get anything. I think it's as simple as that. Let me just have a look. Uh, afterwards, the province the house is built in is activated for production. You receive the goods if you have houses there. Contrarius never receives goods. If the province had already been activated, then you reactivate the bonus markers as long as that there are at least three of them flipped face up. Right. Okay. So that province produces, but I'm not there, so I don't get anything. Right. Back to me. I've got space for some more goods. Don't really want to play. Oh, I need to flip that over, don't I? Yeah. I could play Prefect and take the money. The six money there. That's not actually too bad. Yeah, I'm going to play a Prefect and I'm going to choose option B to just reactivate the provinces and take six money. I think I'm, I'm now regretting not buying that, um, that third brick. Six money. And whenever I do that... Contrarius gets two points. There you go. Right, back to me. So, I'm thinking of Tribune. I'm also thinking of Diplomat the Prefect. Because can I build in two wine cities? Yeah, I could. I'd then be in all three wine cities. Although that's... That's going to cost me four. That's going to cost me eight. That's going to cost me a total of 12. Yeah, I'll have that, but I need, I need the wine. I'm going to get the wine. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to play Diplomat, and I'm going to copy uh, the Prefectus Magnus card from my opponent. Okay, so I basically, I just copy this card and then this card gets flipped face down. And this is this is the same as uh, same as same as my normal card. So I'm going to produce in Campania again, which again for me is two wine. Yep, so I get two wine. One, two. Uh, and my No, it's not two wine, it's three wine, because I'm playing the Prefectus Magnus. It's three wine because I get the bonus good twice. Uh, and then my opponent gets points for houses in the city, minimum of two. And then that card goes face down. I have diplomated that card. It is gone, it is used. That's the diplomat done. Then I am gonna play Tribune. So I take back all of my cards and from the fourth card onwards I get money. So one, two, three, so one, two, three, four, five. Definitely should have bought that third brick. Then I can spend a food and a metal to build a colonist in Rome, and it's going to be a land colonist. And then, if you look at the Tribune card, you will see that my opponent uh, builds one house for his best specialist, 
and then rolls the red die. Okay, so his best specialist is the smith. So we are looking again for metal houses that it can reach, which is that one, that one, that one. I don't think it can reach this one. No, it can't reach this one. So it's these three. Uh, now it isn't in this region, it isn't in this region, and it isn't in this region. So there's the first tie, well, there's the second tie break. The first tie break is empty cities. They're all empty. So the next tie break is regions that it's not in. It's not in any of them. So again, we're going alphabetical order. So it's going to Hadria. So I'm going to move that to there, and then it's going to move, it's going to build that there. Okay. And then we roll the red die to see whether it's going to take a new colonist. Can you both, can you move to both wine areas? Me? I think I can. Because I'm going to move that to there and that to there. So yeah, and I've got three moving points. So the red die is either uh, land colonist, sea colonist, or card. So it's taking card number one. So it takes the farmer. And I'm just going to put it over that one. And then everything slides down. Okay, right, and then all of those cards are back in my hand, and it's my go again. So I have the money, I have the brick, I have the wine. I think let's do it. I think, um, well, I say do it, I've got three movement points. I probably want to build something else as well. So maybe I'm Makata first. Because I don't need four wine. I only need two wine. Oh, except the vintners come out and I need wine for the vintner. But the vintner's going to get cheaper. And it's still going to cost a wine though. Anyway, I'm playing the Mercata. I'm playing the good Mercata. So I get five money. Uh, I am then going to sell... I'm definitely selling one wine. Uh, that gets me six. Do I want to sell another one? I think I do. I'm going to sell another wine for another six. So that's one of my trades, and my second trade, it's going to have to be food to build in the brick cities, but can I actually reach a brick city? Huh. Yes, I can. It's not great though. Okay, I'm going to buy a couple of food. Food is uh, four, so I'm going to buy two food. Okay, so they are my two trades with the Mercator. Uh, and then my opponent builds by rolling the black die and the province produces. Did I forget one of them earlier? I think I might have done. So it wants to build in a food city. So again, we're going to look at food cities that it can reach. It's got two movement points. So it can get to there. It can get to there. It can get to there. But I think this is out of reach. Oh, and it can get to here as well. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four possible cities it can build in. Can it get to over here? No, it can't get to over here. Okay, so next tie break, it wants to build in empty cities. They're all empty. Next tie break, regions that it's not in. Well, it's already in Umbria, so it has no interest in there. So it's either uh, Cusa, Ravenna, Nicaea. And in alphabetical order, that's here. Okay, so uh, I choose how I want it to get there. So I could, yeah, no, we'll just move that boat to there. Okay, and then it's going to build in there. And then that province produces, which is nothing for me, unfortunately. Right, that's my Mercator done. Now I'm going to architect. So I'm going to architect. I've got three movement points now because I've got three colonists. And I've got multiple ways I could do this. I mean, it's not ideal because I kind of want brick and wine in different cities, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to move this boat one, two. And then I'm going to move this colonist to there. Okay, I'm now going to build here 
here and here. So that's going to cost me two brick, two wine and a food. And it's going to cost me four for this one, eight for that one, that's 12. And one for that one, 13. So it cost me 13 money. And it cost me two brick, two wine and a food. And I build three houses. So one goes there, one goes there and one goes there. Okay, and then when I play an architect, my opponent takes a card. Card number one. There are other numbers available. So card number one is taking the mason. Okay, and everything slides down. Right, back to me. What am I going to do next? I mean, that plan worked. I'm now in all of the wine cities except for Verona. So I probably want to be producing. And if I produce down in Sicilia, that's great. Because I actually get quite a bit of stuff. So let's do that. Is it going to be the prefect or the prefectus magnus? It doesn't actually matter. Well, apart from the prefectus magnus, it gets me more stuff. So we'll play the prefectus magnus. Uh, I activate Sicilia. I'm playing that, so I get a wine, a wine, a wine, and a brick. So three wine and a brick. There we go. Um, and then my opponent gets points, one for each house in the region to a minimum of two. So he gets two points. There you go. Uh, scoring mistake in the recent youth here video. I'll check that later, Brian. Thank you very much. Oh, and well done, Scott. Yes. Oh, my Verona. <laughs> nice. Right. Uh, me again. Do we do we prefect again? So I can't activate Campania because that's been activated. I can't activate Sicilia. I could activate up here. Because that's, that's more wine. And since my opponent doesn't get anything... Yeah, let's do it again. So I'm going to play Prefect. I'm going to activate Apulia for wine and a wine. So I get another two wine. Going with a heavy wine strategy here. Don't really even like wine. Um, and then my opponent gets two houses. Uh, so two houses, so two points. Right. Okay, back to me again. Got all this wine. Probably need to sell it. We've also got some cards. Ah, there's another architect there, but it needs tools. Don't have any tools. Yeah, I need those cards to become cheaper. Um, it's probably going to be Mercator again, isn't it? Yeah, we'll play Mercator again. I'll get three money. Uh, I'm going to sell wine because I don't need all of this wine at all. In fact, I'm probably only going to need two of it for the rest of the game. One to build in here and one to buy the Vintner. Or maybe buy the Prefect as well. So I'm, I'm probably selling three wine at least. Right, that gets me 18. There you go, that's more like it. Now, what we're going to buy... Uh, we're going to need to buy another metal. To build another colonist. Should we want another colonist? It depends on how many Mars cards I'm buying. Because this is really nice. I do like that card. I think I might look at buying that next. And I can afford that. So... Yeah, I think I might end up buying the tools. So I'm going to buy two tools at a cost of 10. Okay, and my opponent, when I play the Mercator card, did I take the three money? I think I thought the three money. Um, builds a house and the province produces. Monica's in the chat. Hi, Monica. Stop whining, Paul. Yes. <laughs> That's what I do best. Right, it wants to build in a food city. Right. Food cities that it can reach. 
How many movement points has it got? Two. So it can't, it can't reach there. It can reach here, but it's already in that region. It can reach here and it's not in that region. It cannot reach here, but it, it can reach here. So the two options are Ravenna or Nisia. And Nisia is um, first in alphabetical order. So that's where it's going to go. So it moves to here and it builds a house in Nisia. And then the province produces, which flips that over. I think I forgot to flip that over when that produced. I'm going to do it now, but I'm pretty sure this province produced earlier and I forgot to flip that over. Okay, my go. So there's now quite a, quite a lot of money available up there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine money is a lot. So I'm tempted. And this is where you know what your opponent's going to do. So I know that if I play Prefect, it's just going to get points. It's not going to take a card. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to play Prefect. Uh, when I choose option B, my opponent gets two points, and I'm going to get money. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine money is a lot in this game. Okay, and then... I'm going to play Senator, and I am going to buy this Colonist card, because that's going to give me points at the end of the game for, believe it or not, my Colonists. That's going to cost me a food and a something else, and the something else I will pay is Brick. That's the Colonist card. And I'm also going to buy... Uh... Oh! Do I want to take the Diplomat, or do I want to take the Architect? I think I want to take the Architect. That gives me points at the end of the game for every non-brick city that I'm in. Yeah, I'm going to buy that. That's going to cost me a tools and something else. Actually, that's going to get expensive. Ah, oh, should have thought about that. Do I want to buy a second card? I mean, only buying one card is inefficient. Don't have the cloth to buy anything fancy. Hmm. Uh, oh, this is tricky. I was going to save the metal for buying another colonist when I play the Tribune cards, because the Tribune card's coming up soon. <sighs> what do we do? What do we do? I mean, I've got the Diplomat card here. I could play the Diplomat quite easily to just produce. But I don't have a Mercator. But there's a Mercator up there and I've got the money. So we can do it. Okay, so I am actually, I'm going to spend two metal to take the other Architect card. Um, and then my opponent builds a house in white which is S. Now this time it has multiple specialists. It has a smith, a farmer, and a mason. But the smith is the is the most the strongest one out of those. So it is looking to build another metal city again. So again, let's have a look at the metal cities on the board. Can it get here? No. Uh, can it get here? Yes. Can it get here? Yes. So it's just these two and it's not in this region, and it's not in that region, so it will go for Neapolis rather than Potentia. Yeah, because it's already down here, it cannot reach here, and it's already in there. So it's going for Neapolis, so it will move one, two, and it's going to put a house on there. Yeah, it's not in this region, is it? No, it's not in the region. Okay, really small regions on this side of the map. The best specialist is simply the order of these. So it'll be Weaver, Vintner, Smith, Farmer, Mason. It's, it's basically in reverse order, the value of the good. So I could, if I really wanted to, I could line these up. So we've got Smith, Farmer, Mason. That's, that's the order 
of priority of those. Uh, let's put that there like that. There we go. We're done. It built a house. Yeah, it built a house with the white die. Right, so now it's me. Now I did have a plan, didn't I? And it was diplomat. So I'm going to copy the Mercator. So I get three money. And then I'm going to buy two types of goods. And I'm going to buy a food and a metal. Now, whether I buy more than one food or metal, I don't know. Because food and a metal is nine. Shall I do it again? I'll do it again. I'm going to spend another nine to buy another food and another metal. Oh, because of the colonist card. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Mr. Postman. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go crazy and I'm going to spend another nine and I'm going to buy another food and another metal. So that's allowed because with the with the Mercator card, you can buy or sell any amount of two different types of goods. So I have two different types of goods with food and metal and I've just bought loads of it. My opponent then reacts by building a house and the province produces. So using the black die to determine where Contrarius builds, which is wine. It wants to build in a wine city. This is good for me. So a wine city where it can reach. So it can get to here. It can also get to there. It's already there. So it doesn't want to go there. So it's there, there. Can it reach here? It can't reach here. So it's either here or here. Now, it's already in Campania, which means it wants to build down here. So the first tie break is empty city, but there are no empty cities that it can reach. And then the second tie break is a region that it's not in, and it's not in Sicilia. Okay, so it moves one, two. And it's going to build in there. Now this is great because the province then produces. So we flip over Sicilia and I get a wine and a brick. And I have no room for it. <laughs> so I'll take the wine because it's more valuable. Okay, so I didn't have space in my warehouse for everything. That's a shame. Um, but that's my diplomat done. Right, next turn, I'm going to play the colonist. Now the colonist is a card we've not seen before. Uh, I can build as many colonists as I want, or I can take money. So I'm going to choose to build colonists, and I'm going to build three of them. So that's going to cost me all of my metal, and all of my food, um, yeah, I might, I might as well. It means the Tribune card, I'm not going to get anything for it. But I'm going to build all of my remaining three colonists, which means my Mars cards are now worth 12 points at the end of the game. And whenever I architect, I've got six movement points. Uh, and my opponent rolls the red die to see what it's going to do. And it's building a sea colonists. Now, if there wasn't a sea colonist available, it would build a land colonist. And if the land colonist wasn't available, it would take a card. There's a bit in the back of the rulebook to say, if it can't do this, it does this instead, uh, which is, yeah, pretty simple. Tribune or Architect? Well, I can't Architect. I've got three wine. I can't build anything with just wine. So I will be Tribuning. I'll get all my cards back. And I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven money. Um, I can't build another Colonist because all of my Colonists are now on the board. And now it's going to, Contrarius is going to build a house for his best specialist. So it wants to build another metal house. Well, the only one that it can reach, it's got three movement points now, but it still can't get to Segusio. So it's going to build in Potentia. That's the only place it can reach, the only metal city that it can't reach where it currently isn't. So I'm going to move that to there, and we're going to build a house in Potentia. Okay. Um, and then it rolls the red die to see whether it takes a colonist or a card. Doesn't colonist let you build any of Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Colonist, the card colonist, isn't built in Rome. It's actually built in any of your cities that you're in. Thank you. So I will 
I will build that there just because I can. And I will build that there. Uh, yeah, I'll build that there. Thank you very much for that. I'd forgotten that. Right, we're rolling the red die for it. It's with a land colonist. That comes on there. Right. My go again. Now, we got lots of wine. Uh, my plans are, I want to take the vintner, but it needs cloth. And I also want, and, and I want to build in there, because then that's going to be worth quite a lot of points at the end of the game. Also, there's another colonist card come out. And because I've got all of my colonists on the board, the Mars cards for me are really valuable. Saturnus cards, not so much, because I'm not over here, but I'm, I'm going to get there. So it's not going to be Architect, it's not going to be that, it's not going to be Colonist. It might be Mercator. Or... Sicilia's already been activated. I need the brick. I've got quite a bit of money, but... Yeah. I kind of want the cloth as well, but the cloth producing regions, if I was to play the prefect, I'm not in any of them. Now you can still do that. I could play the prefect and take two cloth from Venetia. I could absolutely do that, and then that would allow me to buy the, the Vintner, almost. That is a very real possibility, but I'm tempted to build in Verona first and then activate the region because then I'd get the wine. Which has been a little bit greedy, but I think that's probably what I'm going to do. So I'm going to play the the good Mercator to get five money. I am going to sell. Hmm. I want to. I want to. Maybe I don't sell the wine. Maybe I just buy other stuff. I definitely need at least one brick. So I'm probably going to buy two brick. So I spend six money for two brick. Now, I'm also going to buy one food for four money. So the two things that I've bought are bricks and food. Do I want any more bricks and or any more food? Because remember, when you play the architect, you can build wherever. And if we're looking at my Saturnus cards, how many Saturnus cards have I got? Okay, I've got three Saturnus cards, so I kind of do want to spread out. Maybe we do need to build in some more brick cities. I'm in Sicilia, I'm not in Luciana. I'm in Campania, I'm not here. So I'd like to build there. That's, and that's food, it's food to build in these. Ah, but I need money as well. So that's gonna cost me four. And then building in, there is going to cost me five. And there's going to cost me six. Hmm, yeah. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend another four for another food. Calculations. Yeah, the scoring system in this game is fantastic. I mean, it's just genius. You know, every, every few years, somebody comes along with something that's just simple, but genius and the way that he decided to tie in the cards that you buy the action cards that you buy during the game into scoring cards as well is just yeah fantastic right that's Mercator Contrarius is building and the province is producing oh I might get stuff for this it's building metal are there any metal cities that it can reach that it isn't in? Because <laughs> it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. Can it reach here? It's now got, it's got four movement points. So I think it can, it can. One, two, three, four, it can, it's got there. It's built in the fourth metal city and then the province produces, which gets me nothing. Right, my go. I think I've just about got enough money to do what I want to do. So I'm playing Architect. 
I have six movement points. I am going... Oh, please tell me I got this right. I don't think I have. Oh, why did I build that there? It's Andrew's fault. Blame Andrew. He told me I could build my colonists anyway, so I built this one here. <laughs> Needed to build it here. I don't think I can do this. Oh, maybe I can. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I can't. Oh! <sighs> right. Oh dear. Oh well, let's just go, let's let's plan for the turn after. So I go one, two, three, four, five. That will allow me to build in those two. Uh and Six. Oh, actually, that's not bad because I build there. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I'm building there, which costs. Oh, no, 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 no. It's brick that I need to be in. Okay. Move that back to there, which is minus one movement point, which means I can move that to there for one movement point. Right. I'm building there, which costs one, there, which costs four, and there, which costs one. So that's all of my money. That costs me two food, a brick, and a wine. And I am in there, there, and there. Now that's really good as far as my Saturnus cards go, because that is three additional regions. Not so good for my Jupiter card, because brick cities don't count for Jupiter. But that's good. Right, Architect. My opponent is taking a card. Card number one again. Again, other numbers are available. It's taking a diplomat. Now, you can't diplomat a diplomat, so <laughs> that's a bit odd. But that card is now there. And how many cards? That's it now. The seventh card has entered the row. So the deck is empty. Uh, the, the Concordia card is now available for whoever takes the last card. Right, what am I going to do? I'm happy with that. I need to, my, my targets are now set on this. And I can now buy that if I really want to. But again, I can control when my opponent buys it. So, I probably want to get more stuff to buy more cards because there is another Mars card there. So that's going to cost me a cloth, a cloth and a food, and that's going to cost me a wine, a brick, and a something. And I have no money. I have absolutely no money at all. Now, if I play... I could play the colonist just to get 11 money. And my opponent gets two points. That seems right. Robert's in the chat. Hi, Robert. Good evening. He played Furnace for the first time. How is Paul doing? Paul is good. Paul is very good today because I played uh, uh, Imperial Steam yesterday that might possibly be my game of the year. And Concordia is fantastic. So, yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a good place. Thank you for asking. I think we're going to play the Colonist card. We're going to choose option B which gets me five money plus one per colonist. So that gets me 11 money. And my opponent gets two points. My opponent doesn't seem to be getting that many points. I have not played Prefect for a while, have I? Right, back to me. I've got the money now, but I need more because we've worked out I need a cloth, a food, and a food. And that is gonna cost me 18 money. I don't have 18 money. <laughs> oh, we were going to produce. That's what we were going to do. I am playing the Prefectus Magnus card and I am activating Venetia. I remember now. So I get a, a double cloth and a wine. There you go. All of a sudden, I now have loads of stuff. And my opponent gets uh, two points. There we go. Right. Now we've got almost the stuff we need. I'd probably Mercator for the extra cloth, uh, for the extra food. Yeah, I think we'll Mercator for the food. Yeah, okay, Mercator. It's only the little one because I've already played the big one. So I get three money. I am gonna buy, how much food do we wanna buy? 
We're definitely buying one food. I'm not sure I need to buy any more. Am I planning on building in any more food cities or brick cities? Actually, yes. But I know that I need the money for the other stuff. Um, 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 um. Okay, so yes, I am going to buy another food. That's going to cost me another four. Doesn't leave me much money, does it? And I don't need all of this wine. I, uh, food is the only thing I've bought, isn't it? And I definitely don't need this wine now. Unless I decide to buy the Mercury, uh, this card as well. Or those. Okay, I'm going to sell one of the wine for six. That's my Mercator done. My opponent rolls the black die and the province activates. It's brick. Oh, MR Marmalo's in. Good to see you. It's been a while. Is the card die a standard D6? It is not. It is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's, it's a D6, but the 6 is a 1. So it wants to build in a brick city. Right, now this has suddenly opened up because it hasn't built in any brick cities yet. It has four movement points. It can probably get most places, to be honest. I think with four movement points, it can probably get anywhere. So we need to look at uh, brick cities where it doesn't have a house in regions where it isn't. So it's not in Venetia. Uh, it's not in Amelia. Let me just check the tiebreakers again. Will it prioritize building cities that it is able to reach where it is not? If multiple cities, it chooses an empty one. So it goes for empty cities as the priority tiebreaker two, and then a new province as tiebreaker number three. So it will it will prioritize this one over this one. Yeah. So that's that's a possibility. Um that's it. Yeah, because it, it's already in that region. It's already in is that right? Cities that it can reach. Tiebreaker 2, empty cities without any houses. Only if no empty city is reachable does it build in a house where there's already a house. Yeah, so it will build in either there or there, but it's already there. It's already there. Sorry, there, there or there, but it's already in that region. It's already in that region. So it's there. Well, this is perfect for me. One, two, three. It builds in there because the province produces. Uh, now, Venetia has already been activated. Aha! So, we have the other thing that we've not seen yet is... Um, if the province produces... Yeah, if there are... If the province has already been activated and there's at least three bonus markers with their coins up, you flip them over. So, it just takes money. So, I don't actually get anything. There was just three. There was just three. Okay, right. We're done. That's the Mercator. Now, what was I going to do with all of this stuff? I got distracted. I think I was senatoring to buy some of those cards. So I am going to senator. I am going to buy the Vintner card that's going to get me approximately one billion points at the end of the game. That's going to cost me a wine, a brick, and something else. Wine, a brick, and something else. Nice, tasty card. And do we also want to buy the colonist card, which is going to cost me a food and a cloth? Oh, yeah, I do. There you go. That's going to get me two billion points at the end of the game. I do like some billion points. What am I doing with that? No, that, that just goes there for the last person to take it. And because I played the senator, my opponent is building a house. Food. It wants to build in a food city which is uh, empty and not in a region that it's in. There. It is not in Amelia. So we'll move that to there, shortest route, and it builds 
in there. Is it everywhere? I think it is. I think my opponent is now in all regions. So we're getting near the end of the game. I think. Well, I mean, there's still five cards left. Maybe not. <laughs> um, but I probably want to buy those cards. I mean, I've got my I've got my four wine cities. I'm happy with that. There are a couple of places that I'm not in. In fact, there's a few. One, two, three. Four. There's four regions that I'm not in. So we could look at building into those regions. Or we could just look at buying extra cards. Um, yeah, I'm thinking, because those Jupiter cards are actually worth quite a bit of points. That's not worth any points to me whatsoever, because I'm not in any cloth cities. I mean, I could start, I could start building in the cloth cities. Uh, that could be a thing. But I think I'm tempted to let my opponent try and pick that card up. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to, do we want to diplomat any of those? No, not really. I could diplomat the Mason. How many brick cities am I in? One, two, three. Oh, that's not two, four. I'm in four brick cities. That, diplomat the Mason, would be I'd get four brick. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's actually pretty good. I might do that. But do I want to build in another brick city first? Maybe in the regions that I'm not in. Maybe here. Hmm. If we're going to architect, I want to do a big architect and build in loads of places. But I need the money for that. And I don't really have the money. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to play the Vintner which produces wine in all of my cities, which is one, two, three, four. So I get four wine, and my opponent gets three points. One, two, three, four. And then we'll Mercator and we'll sell it all. I think that's the plan. Oh, I haven't got my Mercator. I could play the Colonist card. Yeah, I'll play the Colonist card to get 11 money. My opponent gets two points. See how quick it runs once you know what you're doing? Um, are we going to prefect? What do we want? I mean, I could go to Venetia again and prefect there. Yeah, let's prefect in Venetia. So I get cloth, brick, and wine. So much wine. Okay, and my opponent gets uh, one point per house minimum of one. So my, my opponent gets two points. Uh, right. Are we at the point where I might just have to Tribune just to get my cards back? We are, we are looking at a big architect for the end of the game, aren't we? I think, with these cards. Oh, I could Diplomat the Senator and buy some more cards. And there's a Perfectus Magnus card there that I've just spotted. That would be quite nice. Or do we want a Prefect in Sicilia? That's a bit of overkill, isn't it? No, we could do it. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's Prefect in Sicilia, which is a wine, a wine and a brick. <laughs> Have you ever seen this much wine? Look at that. And my opponent gets three points because there's three houses there. Okay, and now we're going to diplomat the senator. So I'm buying two cards. I'm buying this prefect, which costs me a wine and something else, and the something else will be brick. And I'm also buying, now I don't know whether Jupiter or Mercurius is actually better for me. Mercurius is two points for each different type of city that you're in. And I mean everything except cloth, but I'm probably going to build cloth at the end of the game. 
So I'm going to take this, which costs a wine and a cloth. Wine and a cloth. That's mine as well. There you go. Those slide down. Uh, and because I've diplomated the Senate, my opponent builds a White House. Metal. Right. We're going to have to use a part of the rules that I've not read yet because it wants to build in a metal city and it is already in all of the metal cities. And this is covered in the game. Building houses. Uh, if there is no city of the determined goods type available, Contrarius tries to build a city of the next lower type. So that would be a tool city or a metal city. So it's going to go for food. Right. So it wants to build in a food city, which is empty, which there's loads of, prioritizing a region that it's not in, but it's in all of the regions. So therefore it's alphabetical order. So we have Commun, Commum, Syracuse, uh, Spoletum. I think that's it. So which one is in alphabetical order? It's that one. So that goes there and it was white so it doesn't produce and that is that card done. Just move these down. Right, my go. Um, right, time is running out. If I want to take... Right, I... Oh... If I play the architect, that will, that will mean... If I play the architect, it will take a card and then I can buy the last two and end the game. But, as I mentioned, when I architect, I actually want to do... Look, I'm going to play Makata. That's what I'm going to do. So I take five money. Right, now, I don't need this wine. I really do not need... I don't need any of this wine at all because of... These cards don't need wine. And I'm not going to build any wine cities. So I sell one, two, three, four, five, six wine for 36 money. Right, now, what am I going to buy? Well, <laughs> I can only buy one type of good. Um, yeah, this is the problem, isn't it? Because... Yeah. What am I going to buy? I'm going to buy brick. Let's buy brick. How many bricks? One, two, three, four bricks. Yeah, let's buy four bricks. Or maybe five bricks. Because I've got loads of money now. So I'll buy five bricks for 15. There you go. And my opponent builds a house and the province produces. Where's it going to build a house? Wine. So it wants to build in a wine city. <laughs> okay, so wine cities where it isn't. Because, well, first of all, wine cities that are completely empty. No, wine cities where it isn't and it can reach. There, there, that's it. Are any of them empty? No. Are any of them in regions where it's not in? No. So it's alphabetical order, so it's here. So it, it goes through all of the tie breaks and then it builds there. And then the province produces, so it's Campania. So I get a wine. Just after selling it all, I've now got more of the stuff. I can't, I can't get rid of it. Anybody want any wine? Right. Done. That was the Makata done. Are we now doing a prefect to get some cloth before a mass final build? I think we are. So, I, it, oh, it's prefect as Magnus as well. Right. And I need cloth from this. So, places which produce cloth where I also... I oh know, I'm not bothered about getting anything. So it's basically there or there, and it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to take this one, I flip that over, and I take two cloth, because I'm playing the Perfectus Magnus card. So it doubles the bonus. Uh, oh, it does matter, because my opponent gets points. And there's only one house there, but it's a minimum of two. Okay. Done. And now... Boom. Tis a big architect. So I'm going to spend one movement point 
two movement points. Hmm. I'm not going to get in here, am I? I could build... Mm. No, I think it's going to take that one. Yes, I don't think I want to build the third cloth one. I think that's it. And I'm going to spend two brick and two cloth. Yeah, I bought way too much brick. <laughs> and we're going to build there and there for a cost of 10. Okay. I think that's right. My opponent takes a card. Kind of hoping this isn't card number one, because then I can buy it and it's actually 10 points for me. It's card number one. Okay, so my opponent has bought card number one, which goes there. And now I have one card left, which is Tribune. So I get loads of money. I get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow. Twelve money. Um, I can't buy any colonists. My opponent builds a house for his best specialist. So he wants to build metal. Can't build metal. So it goes to the next one down, which is food. Uh, it's in pretty much all of the food cities. It's not there and it's not there. And it's alphabetical order, which is there. Oh, it's only got one house left. Okay. And then it rolls the red die. Oh, it might take a card. It doesn't. It builds a land colonist. Right. I now have all of my cards back. Unfortunately, I cannot end the game because I need the tools to buy that card. So, I'm going to have to play two cards before I can end the game. Um, and one of those cards needs to get me a tools in order for me to buy both of those and end the game. So, the best way of me getting tools is probably to play Makata. That gets me five money. And then I just buy tools. Or is there somewhere where I can produce metal where I also get something else that's worth more than five? There isn't. So it's going to be Makata. The problem with that is my opponent builds a house. Ah. Okay. So we have a thing. If my opponent builds a house, that triggers the end of the game and my opponent gets the 15 cards. <laughs> so, I don't want to play the Makata because that will cause the end of the game to trigger. So the only other way of me getting metal is by playing a Prefect. So yeah, it's a little bit strange, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play Prefect. Uh, I am going to choose Umbria. So I get a metal and I also get a brick. And my opponent gets, there's three houses there, so my opponent gets three points. And then as my final action of the game, I play Senator. I buy that for cloth, and I buy that for tools and a brick. And that triggers the end of the game, so I get the Concordia card. And then my opponent builds a house. This has been fantastic. This is a really good solo mode. Uh, wine. It wants to build in a wine city. Now, the only wine city that it's not in is there, and it doesn't need to move, and that is it. End of the game is done. Right. Final scoring. Final scoring follows the same rules as in Concor Concordia. Contrarius scores all the gods on it, all of its cards, face up and face down, following the normal rules. Right. So, uh, and if it's a tie, owning the Concordia card wins the game. So let's do Contrarius' scoring first. And let's see what score I need to, to beat. First of all, it has the Weaver card, which is five points for each cloth city that it is in. It is not in any of the cloth cities. Awesome. That's a good start. Right, how many Saturnus cards has it got? 
It's got one, two, three Saturnus cards, and it's in all of the regions. And how many regions are there on this map? Uh, 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's 33 points. So we've got to 65. Next. Oh, just notice that, that architect card has double Jupiter on it. <sighs> right, Jupiter cards. It has two Jupiter. So Jupiter is for non-brick cities. Oh, wow. This is going to be huge. Uh, well, it's got 15 houses on the board. We know that. And how many brick cities is it in? One. One. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Where was this? They must be there. Yeah, I think I've knocked these accidentally. I don't know if that would have made any difference, but apologies for that. It looks like I knocked these two houses. So it's got 14 non-brick cities and it's got double Jupiter. So that's 28 points. So knock two off, add 30. Right. Uh, it's got three points for each metal city that it's in. And it's in one, two, three, four metal cities. Five. So that's 15 points. Three points for every food city that it's in, which is one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, this is big scoring. Okay. Three points for every brick city that it's in, which we now know is just one. Uh, Mercurius is two points for each different type of city that it's in. And it's not in cloth, so we know that that's eight Eight points for Mercurius. Yeah, because it's in food, uh, it's in brick, it's in tools, and it's in wine. So eight points for Mercurius. And finally, Mars, it has five colonists on the board, 10 points. Right, so 147 is my score to beat. Are we ready? What do you think in the chat? Do you think I've managed to win? Um, first of all, we sell all of the remaining goods at face value, so that's 12. Plus six is 18. So I'll take 20, put two back. And then the first card I'm going to score is the Vesta card, which is one point for every 10 money. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, six points. Six points for my Vesta card. Right, off we go then. Let's do Saturnus first. How many Saturnus cards do I have? Oh, and let's do my Concordia card. I get seven points for my Concordia card. Right, so. Saturnus, I've got one, two, three, four Saturnus cards, and I'm in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine regions. Yeah, so nine regions, Four Saturnus cards is 36. So one, two, three, four back and add 40, 69. Okay, next up, my Mercurius cards. I have three Mercurius cards. They give two points for each different type of city I'm in. I'm in all five types of city. So that's 10 points each, that's 30 points, 99. Right, next, Mars cards. I have three Mars cards. I have all of my colonists on the board. So each Mars card is worth uh, 12 points. So that's 36 points. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we're getting there. No, I think I've done this. I think I've done this. Jupiter, I have one, two, three, four. I've got five Jupiter cards. How many non-brick cities am I in? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm only in six non-brick cities, but that's five cards, that's 30 points. And then finally, my Minerva for wine gets me 16 points because I am in all four of the wine cities. So that's 16 points. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I think I played that quite well. 181 plays 147. Remember, this was the easiest difficulty setting. Um, so yeah, I managed to win. But that is how the Solitaria mode works. And again, this is just the Italia map. We have rules for all of the other maps. We also have different difficulty settings. So to give you an idea, the next difficulty setting up is uh, on veteran mode. I start with 10 points, but Contrarius actually starts with one house in the most valuable city adjacent to the capital. So it would have actually started with something on the board. And then there's expert mode where um, <clears throat> it gets a house on one of each of the following positions on the victory point track. So it gets a house on 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And during the game, it scores immediately through some of its reactions. Whenever it moves its scoring marker on or over a house, it takes the house and builds it onto the game board. And you start with no victory points. So yeah, I wouldn't have won the game, I don't think, on expert mode. Um, and remember, you can use Contrarius in a two-player game if you want to, as a third player. And there's some extra rules here, and there's some extra cards included with it. Um, yeah, the Solitaria team cards, I don't know. Maybe you can play a team game with Contrarius as, a, as another player. I don't know. And then there's the campaign as well. Anyway, this was fantastic. Really, really enjoyed this. Very, very good solo mode. And it was the one thing missing from Concordia. Although we had David Digby's solo mode, which was good, um, we were missing an official solo mode. So I like what they've done with it. Um, and yeah, I'm curious to see how many people watching this have tried this. Let me know. Smashed it. Yeah, absolutely smashed it. Which means I get to eat this Jaffa cake, which I will eat off camera. Thank you very much to everybody for watching. Again, as mentioned at the start, this isn't a sponsored stream, so these streams are only made possible thanks to the support of my Patreon campaign. Thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters for making this possible. And if you do like the content that I create, please consider checking out the Patreon uh, page at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. I will be back with some more stuff. Um, I may be doing some Patreon only streams this weekend. I'm really in the mood for playing more games at the moment, but I have live stuff going on as well. Uh, but I'll definitely be back next week with lots more public streams, including uh, Zapotec is happening next week, Maracaibo is happening next week, and there's something else happening next week that I can't remember. But yeah, more streams over the next couple of weeks in the run-up to Christmas. But for now, thank you very much for everybody for watching. Take care, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.